Hello, and welcome back to a brief history of the second law of thermodynamics. In the last episode, we learned about Sadie Carnot and his contribution to the groundwork of the second law. In this episode, we will be discussing the two scientists who were often accredited with the original statements of the second law of thermodynamics. William Thomson, or as you may better know him, Lord Kelvin, and Rudolf Clausius. Lord Kelvin, who was born in 1824, was a Scottish engineer, mathematician, and physicist. He asserted that a cyclic transformation, whose only final result was to transform heat extracted from a source, which is at the same temperature throughout, would be impossible. In other words, this version of the second law states today what we may assume to be obvious. The conversion of heat into work at a constant temperature is impossible. Similarly, Rudolf Clausius, a German mathematician and physicist born in 1822, asserted that a cyclic transformation whose only final result is to transfer heat from a body at a given temperature to a body at a higher temperature is impossible. Although these two versions of the second law of thermodynamics are worded in a slightly different manner, they express the same information. One statement can simply not be true without the other. In fact, these two versions of the second law can be simplified into a version that we are all most familiar with. Heat always flows from hot to cold. In addition to this possibly oversimplified version, the second law of thermodynamics can also be described in terms of entropy. Entropy is described by Merriam-Webster as the degree of disorder or uncertainty in a system. When considered through this lens, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that the entropy or disorder of the universe is always increasing. The concept of entropy was originally introduced in 1850 by Rudolf Clausius in order to test if a particular process violated his aforementioned postulation, i.e. the second law of thermodynamics. Clausius found that entropy is positive when heat flows from a higher temperature to a lower temperature, as it does spontaneously, supporting his ideas about the second law of thermodynamics. Thank you for watching part two of this three-part series on the brief history of the second law of thermodynamics. The topic of our next and final video is my personal favorite, so be sure to check that one out. And just like last time, remember that you can find more information on any of the topics that we've covered in the last two or so minutes in the description box below.